So here's a closer look at that circuit board strip that I'm going to be mounting the uh, resistor capacitor combos on here. Each one will go in between the pads here and uh, I've got some original parts from the probe itself. There's the the brass shield that's inside the probe. That's uh, this thing right here. So I cut that so I you know took all the plastic off of that and cut it short and then basically everything's soldered inside this hollowed out BNC connector and that's and the reason I'm using that is just so I can conveniently conveniently mount it inside this aluminum enclosure box. Now I didn't actually print or etch this out or anything. This circuit board was part of a another circuit board. Here's my box of scrap circuit boards. I took one like this. I ground off some of the traces and then cut it on the bandsaw into a thin strip shape. So here is the four 9 mega ohm resistors that I took out of the probes. They were each inside of a plastic tube like this and then the, of course that was inside the shield. And what's really interesting about these is how they were connected inside the tube. I mean you wouldn't, you wouldn't get a very good connection if you had this, the metal end just pressing on another metal pin. So what they did is, maybe you can see it, there's a that thing right there, that's a small piece of conductive foam. Let me get one here. Little tiny cylinder of conductive foam. I put some ohmmeter probes across that and it's about 5 to 10 ohms, which is really nothing compared to the 9 mega ohm resistance of the component. But there would be one of those conductive foam pads on either end of it, one going to the wire that goes to the coax cable and then one that goes on the inside, one that makes contact with the metal pin on the end of the probe. But apparently since they were designed to be connected in such a way, they were not designed to be soldered. I did actually solder the first four that I tried before inside the the big pin tube and um, had a really tough time soldering them. I mean they did solder a little bit but just barely. They are just barely holding on there. So this was my first try and I'm not going to be using this anymore. That's why I'm working on this other board putting a little nicer effort into this one and in order to make these things more solderable I'm gonna take some copper foil like this, gonna tin, tin, tin some solder on there on either side and then cut them, cut it into little tiny strips, wrap those strips around the end of each resistor here, and then hopefully that'll make it easier to solder um, on, the, on the pin, on, on the end cap of the component as well as on the pads on the circuit board. And here it is. Got it put in the aluminum enclosure and you can see I got the four resistors all mounted on the board right there and with the copper end caps surrounding the end of each resistor. Very tedious work putting those on but it was worth it because they're very very well soldered on and I got them on a uh, zigzag pattern right there just so they can all fit in a, in a line. And then this wire right here that's just a ground wire to which I can connect some capacitors going to individual nodes and um, and the center conductor comes in there goes to the first resistor and then the end resistor of course goes to the input connector just a regular BNC connector it's really cheap ass BNC connector but it makes a good high voltage insulator with all the all the plastic on either side of it so I'm testing it now. I got 5 nanosecond pulse, 100 kilohertz signal going in here. And you can see on the scope, channel 1 and channel 2, they're pretty much identical. I've already 
put compensation cap on the uh, on the compensation box. That little 100, 150 picofarad cap in the back there, and then a variable cap in parallel with that. So about 170 picofarad or so, and you can see it's very clean square wave. The uh, the newer probe, that's that's my uh, standard. That's the 10x probe, and here's my custom built one 100x probe. And let me zoom in on the time scale here, and you can see that it's not so good anymore. I mean, we saw in the P-Spice model that with the 0.1 picofarad on each node of the input stage, there was a really, really big spike just like this, whereas everything else was perfect square wave except for that one spike in the beginning. And so that's pretty much what we're seeing here with very minimal capacitance on each node. We've got that spike here. And um, I'm looking at, got rise time measurements down here. And you can see that because it's actually a five nanosecond rise time going in, the, uh, the 10X probe shows about seven nanosecond, but the, the probe that I built is only four and a half nanosecond, which it really should not be. The rise time on the scope should not be greater than what the function generator is able to put out. There's also this oscillation going on here. I'm not worried about that. That's just from probably from ground inductance. And uh, but basically once I fix it to get this spike down here, then the rise time should closely match the 10x probe around six, seven, eight nanoseconds, and um, and the spike hopefully will be very minimal as well. So I'm going to add some caps in here, you know, maybe 10 picofarad cap here, one picofarad there, I don't know, we'll see. It'll take some trial and error to figure out what capacitors to put in here because in the P-SPICE model, some of the values that I used for the components in the whole system were a little different from what I have here in real life.